Okay, here we are in week six, and I have a couple things outstanding for you, right? Um, let's pull up the sheet. Okay, here's the sheet I've been using for homework assignments. So remember that this reading assignment's still out here. Your exam is next week. So if you're going to read this, it would be good to have it read before next week for the exam. Um, also, today we have Intro GeoGebra Lab, that um, the one where you have to draw a triangle three different ways. You have to create what a perpendicular line. Um, what else do you have to do? A circle using two different methods. Um, I can't remember what all you did had to do. I think maybe a parallel line. I don't remember. But there were several things on there, then about six or seven different things you have to do. So that's due today. Um, some of you have already turned that in. I saw your um, document or your PDF inside of the GeoGebra thing. Remember that the plan for that is you will go into GeoGebra. Um, you have to make an account if you haven't done this yet, right? You have to make an account and you have to um, log into that account, do this assignment, and then um, save the page or pages. Some people have done multiple pages because you don't want everything to be on one page because it gets crammed, that's fine. Um, save the page. And then there's some symbol, it looks something like that. And uh -oh. no, was that you? Oh, yes, no. okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure I didn't lose something or something. Um, there is a symbol, something like that, at the top, and that is where you can copy the link or embed the link. Either one should get you where you want to go. Um, everybody who sent it that I've looked at so far has been. I've been able to see your link and get into your page, so it hasn't been a problem. Um, so what you'll do is you'll make a, a dot doc and title it something like GeoGebra Intro Lab or something like that. Put the link into it. I don't need anything else on this first one, just access to your page. And then if you would, I would I'd prefer if you change it to a dot PDF, save as dot PDF and load it into um, activities, assignments, and I think it's called something like GeoGebra Lab um, software, construction software intro or something like that. Okay, so load the PDF or you can put the doc in there, but it's better if you save as a PDF and load it up in there. So the only thing in there oh, should be your hopefully name, although I can find out who you are, so look back to your account and the link. If you've already sent it in and you didn't put your name on it, it's no big deal. I'll find you. Um, but that's that's what's out there. That was the plan for how to get me access to your page. You have to save it in your account or else it won't work. Okay, Samantha says, what exactly are we constructing in GeoGebra? The... I have this one. The thing we, we sent out, I was it two weeks ago? Maybe look under week four. Um, it looks like this construction software introduction lab. Mm -hmm. And was it in week four? I think it's week four. So if not, it's week five, but I think it's four. Find online software, get your ad account. And this is what you're doing. You're drawing a triangle three different ways, constructing a midpoint on a line segment, construct an angle bisector, and inside of those, you have to use the measurement tools to tell me how long the whole segment is, how long the half segments are, so that we can see them being compared. Um, construct a line perpendicular to a segment through a given point, and then construct a circle in two different ways. Okay, so uh, look under week four. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> look under week four if you're not sure exactly. But that's what you're doing. So uh, it's a lot of different different tools just to make sure you can use the construction tools, just to make sure you can use the polygon tool, you can use the measurement tools, all the different tools. 
you can both draw and construct. So, anybody having problems with it yet? It's going okay. All right. Had the paper printed but ran out of toner. Oh man. So, maybe go back and look in the D2L content because it'll be there. That stinks. Thinking toner. All right, so that's due today by midnight. So, and I don't think it'll take you very long once you get the account and get to playing with it. Um, I think it's a really short one, but I wanted you to have plenty of time to get the account and play with it. So, all right. Okay, and then this is the new homework sheet. So we have this property of special angles properties. Oh, proofs of special angle properties. And that's due on... Not Tuesday the 29th. Why did I say Tuesday the 29th? Yeah. You originally gave us the paper when we took it in and then left with it till Thursday. Yeah, so I extended it. That's what it is. I extended it. What's next Tuesday? Today is the 29th. 30 days. Is that the 8th? No, 6th. That's the 6th. Next Tuesday is the 6th. There we go. And exam one is on October 8th. There we go. That is correct. So <laughs> your proofs will be due on Tuesday. That's what I did. I made them due before your exam so that you won't be messing with proofs after Tuesday. Between Tuesday and Thursday, you should be studying your, for your test, right? Test is on Thursday. Um, we need to talk just a tiny bit about that because um, I have seats for 10 in this room. So there's only been about five attending any day. If uh, you're going to need to take the test next Thursday, if you don't come to class, you can take it in the ATC face-to-face. -face. I put this in D2L last week, right? So um, remember, anybody that has been in this class, I have said the expectation is that you will have a face-to-face -face exam, even if you're not showing up for class, because this is a face-to-face -face class, man. So either you can come to class, but I need to know who's coming because I can't have more than 10 people in here. Okay, so we can talk about that. If you want to tell me right now you want to be in class, that's fine. Um, or um, you can go to the ATC, which is in Ferguson 308. Um, they have seats for eight. So technically our entire class could fit both here and there. Tuesday at two o'clock, okay, if y'all wanted to be there. Okay, so Christina would like to be here in class, come to class. Okay, let me make a list. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. All right, so um, as many as I can get in here, we can get 10 in the classroom. That would be good. Y'all are coming, okay. And the normals that are here. Um, and then we've got Christina and Alexis. Okay, Jessica can go to Ferguson if somebody needs a spot. Garrett would like to come to class. Mary, I'll work with you separately, and Samantha, I'll work with you separately, yes, because there are testing centers available for you in Mesquite, Mary, and available for you in Navarro, um, Samantha. So, yeah, I'll, I'll work with you guys on that, no worries. Okay, our class is Binion 329. I ha highly recommend being in class if you can because that will um, allow you to ask questions if you need to in class. But if not, we can send you to the ACC. Okay, I'm making sure I got everybody. Okay, so Jessica, nobody's yelling, so for right now, I'm going to bring you here, but um, if I need to move you to Ferguson, I will. Okay, so I have come into Commerce right now, Devontae, Summer, Ashley, Ryan, 
to our classroom. Ashley, Ryan, Christina, Alexis, Garrett, and Jessica, which is eight of you guys. And Mary, I'll work with you in Mesquite. And uh, Samantha, I'll work with you in Navarro. I'll have testing sites there, so that'll work out just good. Okay, no worries. So there's a few more people that haven't yelled yet, so they may not be on the Zoom. We'll, we'll work with them. But for right now, all eight of y'all are coming to Commerce Dominion 329. Okay with everybody? Jessica, that includes you for now. If I need to move you, I will. <laughs> Thank you for being flexible there. All right, cool. So that's what we're going to do. Um, anybody else who may be not on Zoomville, but you are listening by um, remote right now, later on in the video, two days from now, whatever, then you need to make arrangements. I put it in the D2L last week. I'll put it back in the D2L this week so everybody knows. You've got to make an arrangement before. Um, I really need that to know who's going to be where by October 6th so that I can send tests to the correct locations. So I'm just going to write that down. That's your deadline to make me let me know if you haven't done it yet. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right, all right. Yay. So that gives us that. Um, There's another face to face one. We'll be there. Well, I'll be there face to face. Okay, Elijah's coming face to face. Gotcha. Thank you. Here to the classroom. Opinion 329. All right, I've also loaded a couple of things into the D2L for week six. I haven't updated, finished updating the content yet, but I went ahead and loaded the papers so y'all can see it. Because you're turning in your first GeoGebra project, you need another one. Man, this one won't be due until after exam one. So it's called something like, uh, GSP lab on parallel lines or something like that in week six. So it looks like this properties of parallel lines. Now, this particular lab, we've already covered parallel lines tons, guys. So y'all should be able to do this pretty easily. Um, the directions are pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to construct AB and a point C that's not on AB and then construct a line parallel to AB through point C. Okay. Follow the directions that, and remember as you're in GeoGebra, if you click on like construct a parallel line through a point, it'll pop up little directions kind of in gray down there at the bottom and say you need to do this and this and this. So uh, it kind of walks you through it, which is nice. It's going to look something like this. You've got a line and a point out here, and then you've got a line and that point's still out there, and they create a parallel line. You construct it. So here's the deal. When you do this, if you have truly constructed a parallel line, then whenever I say I grab point B and I wiggle it, what's going to happen to this line up here? It goes with it wherever I turn, right? And if I pull this line down, then this other line will stay parallel and it will move with it. If you just draw it, draw another line up there, and you don't force it to be parallel, then when I move this one, line C, this guy, will stay still, okay? So that's how I know whether or not you have actually constructed or if you just drew it. So that's your check, okay? So you can do the same check that I'm gonna do whenever I get your thing. You can just grab that point and move it. If they both move, then it's parallel. Then you make the transversal, measure all eight angles. You're gonna measure, 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 measure and then uh, drag a point to make sure that the angles stay the way they're supposed to be. We all know all the properties now, right? Corresponding proper angles should have the same measure. Um, vertical angles should have the same measure, alternate interior, alternate exterior, all of that. So if you've done it correctly, then say this angle FCE, if that's a 45 degree angle, 
then all these others that are congruent to it will also be 45. And when I move it, if it becomes 30, then all the others that are congruent will now become 30. Okay, that's your check. So you put the measurements up there and you make sure, oh, okay, yeah, when one of them changes, all, of, all four of those changes. And the same for the other angle, right, the obtuse angle. When one of those changes, all four obtuse angles should change to be the same number. So you're gonna drag them. Okay, notice that there's a question. Question one, when two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, the pairs of angles formed have specific names and properties, blah, blah, blah. There's on the back a table that you need to fill in so that you know what those are, okay? Um, for the question, you can put in a text box into GeoGebra, but I find it difficult to like make a table and that kind of stuff really in GeoGebra it becomes kind of piled in there. So for the question part, if you want, remember you're gonna make a document, dot, dot, and give me your link to this. So in your document, you could put question one, here's my table, fill in all the stuff. Does that make sense? And then there's also question two here, that'll need to be answered in your document, or you can make a text box in your GeoGebra file if you want to. And then there's a couple more things you have to do to the stuff. Um, notice that they're trying to make you have a new sketch. You can either do that on the same page in GeoGebra, or you can create a new page, a new sketch, and do the, uh, the non-parallel lines in another sketch, that's fine. Um, move the line, see what happens. Um, and then see question three there. Again, that needs to be answered either in a text box or on your document. I think it's probably easy if you're turning in a doc, doc anyway or a doc PDF anyway to just recreate the tables and type it there. Um, yeah, rather than doing the other. The explore more is for bonus points. You don't have to do them, but if you do them, you get a little something. Okay. All right. I have. And I didn't make copies of this for everybody, but I will load it into E2L. I have a copy of the rubric, so you can see exactly what it is I'm looking for. <laughs> okay, so this particular one is property of parallel lines, and I'm going to check for parallel by the drag test. That's what it's called. Okay, grab one of the points and move it. Find a point on one of the lines that will move. Make sure the other line does moves when with the one you're dragging, so they should maintain their distance between each other. You can also, I think if you want to, there's a measure the slope of the line. So if you wanted to, you could measure the slopes of your line and make sure that they change equally. That would be a, a test as well. But this is what I'm going to do to make sure that everything's good. Q1, there's the spot where we're going to check that. Q2, Q3, this gives me a total points, 10 points for each of these. Total of 100 points. Yay. There you go. And I'll load this into D2L so everybody can see it. That way you know how you're going to be graded on that one. Awesome. All right. Questions about GeoGebra? Oh, when's it due? Maria's not here to ask me when's it due. So let's call this uh, GeoGebra Lab. Properties of parallel lines. Okay. And what's the Tuesday, the Tuesday the 13th? Okay. Yes. October 13th. Okay. So that's the Tuesday after your exam. So I'm putting it after the exam because if you have time to mess with it now and just get it done, fine. But some of you still haven't turned in your first GeoGebra thing, so you're still playing with that. Some of you still need to do proofs. Well, everybody still needs to do a proofs, I think. And then um, we have the exam next week. So I would rather you be doing proofs and studying for the exam than for you to be messing with GeoGebra. Does that make sense? So that's why I put it off. And there won't be any homework after exam one over that weekend. Like I won't give you homework the day of an exam, right? 
So therefore, you'll have time to work on that. So that'll be good. I'll watch. Yeah. Keeps you busy and out of trouble. It's good stuff. All right. Yay. Anything else about that? You know how to turn them in? I think that's all I wanted to say. So you guys can work on that. Um, for next week, your test is next week on October 8th, the Thursday. October 6th, you'll turn in proofs. October 6th, we will also work on a review. Okay. So that's your day on October 6th to come into class and ask me questions. Test format. Um, I don't understand this particular problem on the sample questions. That kind of thing. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, I have also loaded into D2L, so you guys at home can see it, under the week six stuff, sample questions for exam one. <laughs> okay, really, really straightforward what this is. Okay, so. There's all kinds of stuff here from proving stuff to figuring out the angles. I've told you before, I really like these picture things where you have to figure out the angles. I can promise you there will be a couple of those on there. <laughs> There's going to be a flow chart where I fill in, where you, all you have to do is fill in the blanks, right? So that's good. Um, which segment is the shortest? What's wrong with this picture? Should look a lot like some of your homework questions that you've had to do. What's wrong with this picture? That kind of stuff. Um, use this diagram to answer the question. Some of them will be multiple choice. Some of them will be short answers. Some of them will be proofs. So just all kinds of problems on there. Um, oh, here's the answer key. Yeah. So I even gave you answers. So the last page, welcome back, is your answer key. So you can start working on some of those problems as we get closer to the exam. And you can compare to the answer key. You can um, ask me questions in private, in my office hours, that kind of stuff. Or you can wait until Tuesday, October 6th, and that is your day to ask me any question you want to ask about the test. Sounds good? That's what I like to do. Everybody's easy. Okay, let's start talking about proofs. Oh my goodness. All right. When we were here last time, we had finished up flowchart proofs. There's a few flowcharts on 5.7. I told you I'm not taking this up, but if you're still looking for practice problems for flowchart proofs, these are your practice problems. So proving quadrilateral properties 5.7. Um, that should be in week five because I gave this out last week. Okay, so you can take a look at those. And on the back side of the other page, or separately in your um, D2L, <laughs> is the 13.2 How to Plan a Geometric Proof. Okay, so I want to do one or two of these just to make sure we're good starting out from scratch on proofs. And then uh, before the class is over, we'll go back to the homework assignment that you have. And I'll look at that and make sure that um, we're doing good on those. We'll do one or two more of those. Make sure we're based together. All right. Um, I don't know. Um, I'd say like number two or number four. Does anybody have a preference on this? Have you been working on 13.2? Have you run into problems? Does that mean y'all haven't worked on it or you don't have problems? <laughs> we haven't worked on it. Okay. <laughs> Truthful answer. I like it. I haven't worked on it. <laughs> All right. That's okay. <laughs> um, is there a question? Oh. No. You haven't worked on it. It's okay. I've been working on that, but I've been working on homework. The homework. Good. Okay. We'll look at the homework in a second. Okay. Well, more than a second because you know how these groups go. All right. <laughs> but we'll look at the homework. Okay, so given, I'm going to do number two, okay, right here. It says given angle B and angle ACB are complementary, 
D, E, and F, and F are complementary, show that B, A is parallel to D, E. Okay. So, um, there's a thing in your book. Let me think about that. Um, it's in chapter 13, which this is in case, like, look back at it again. It's 13.2, right? So this, is, this proof stuff is in chapter 13 of your book. And uh, if you go, it's like page 671, maybe. Okay, 669. Okay, and on page 669, there is this stuff, okay? Premises for logical arguments in geometry. We always have definitions and undefined terms. There's always properties of arithmetic, equality, and congruence that I can um, refer back to. There's always postulates of geometry, so we need to make sure we know what postulate really means. So hold on to that thought. And then there's previous proved geometry conjectures. Once they're proven, you can call them theorems because we have a proof for that theorem. Um, it doesn't matter if you call them theorems. If you want to continue calling them conjectures, that's fine. But we're going to prove a lot of them. And then once we, once we have proven them, then we know for a fact that they're real and they're in there, right? Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Um, where is the... I'm not finding the thing I'm looking for. Give me a second. So those are the premises. Um, I'll come back to that guy. Okay, on page 672 and 673, these are the postulates that I made copies of like weeks ago and gave to you guys. And so you know, I want to notice a couple of things in here. First of all, we need to know postulates. Like what does that mean? Postulate. Is a postulate something that I'm going to prove or something that I'm not going to prove? Yeah, it's kind of like a given. It's it's not quite a definition, right? It's something that we say, okay, we're just going to assume that this rule works. Okay, yeah, it's kind of an assumption or that's obvious kind of thing. Um, some of the ones like you see up here, line postulate, you can construct exactly one line through any two points. Yeah, that's it's kind of obvious, Ryan says, right? Okay, for sure I can't necessarily prove that, so we're just all going to have to say that's the rule. Okay, we know. We can, we can construct a line between two points. Um, line intersection postulate. The intersection of two distinct lines is exactly one point. Well, we know that. As long as it's not the same line piled on top of each other, then we know that they have diff they're straight, and we know that they have different slopes, so we know that they can only meet in one spot, right? If it was a parabola in a line, they can meet in a couple of spots. But a line and a line, no, only one spot. Okay, so we know that. So these are things that just kind of, it, it's hard to prove that though, right? Go back and prove that lines intersect in exactly one point. I mean, it's kind of just a bunch of definitions. You know, line is straight, line has a slope, it's not the same as the other slope. Okay, we know it's going to it's going to meet. So as I look through, we've got the angle addition property and the segment addition property. It just says, if I add AB to BC, then I can get AC and yada, yada. I see over here on the right-hand side, <laughs> the corresponding angle, angles postulate. Okay. By the way, there's the linear pair postulate, right? We've talked about that one before. So the corresponding angles postulate, we know what it is. If you got two lines that are parallel and they're cut by a transversal, then the ones that are in the same, the angles that are in the same position are congruent, right? But they're calling it a postulate. They're not calling it a conjecture, okay? If you look, I, I can prove this, but I have to use another property in order to prove it, okay? And so if you look, for instance, on your special angles thing, the page that's due, October 6th, 
you'll notice that we do vertical angles and we do alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles and interior supplement angles. We never do corresponding angles. Mm -hmm. Conjecture needs to be proven. Conjectures need to be proven, yeah. So, and, and what we'll do is we'll come up with a proof for them and then we'll call them a theorem. Yes, exactly. So those are statements, conjectures are statements that I can use definitions and properties and equality stuff and postulates and I can prove the conjecture, okay, if I use enough of those other things in logical step-by-step -step stuff. Mm -hmm. Like in most of the converse problems, uh, or uh, mm. I get a result that basically tells me that it's because it has corresponding angles that we know that it's parallel. Yes. Uh, would it be written off as? A conjecture if that's the end result, if the end result is what's telling me that it's parallel. Well, you're doing the converse, right? Mm -hmm. So the converse basically means work backwards, mm -hmm. okay? Um, just for everybody's knowledge. So what we would normally do here, for instance, I'm looking at alternate interior angles. We start with the fact that we know the lines are parallel, right? And they're cut by a transversal. And we come up with interior angles are congruent. But for the converse beneath it, we start with the lines that are cut by a transversal, but it doesn't tell me they're parallel. Okay. Yeah, it tells me that the congruent angles, uh, alternate interior angles, or this one's exterior. But anyway, no, here's exterior, there's interior. It tells me that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So what I need to prove is that the lines are parallel. And so what Ryan's saying is he's working backwards basically from these congruent alternate interior and he's getting to corresponding angles and corresponding angles is a postulate. So we can just use it. We just assume it's true. It's like a rule for the road, okay? So we know we can use that. So it's okay if you've gotten back to corresponding angles are congruent because that tells you, okay, these are congruent. So therefore the parallel lines are congruent, okay? So it would be a postulate. Um, the corresponding angle is a postulate. Yes. So that's what, and that's actually what I'm pointing out here. Basically, it goes like this. I can prove alternate interior angles by using corresponding angles. Okay. I can prove alternate exterior angles by using corresponding angles. I can use um, supplementary angles by using corresponding angles. So a lot of these kind of trail back to corresponding angles. The problem with corresponding angles is, in order to prove corresponding angles, I need either alternate interior or alternate exterior. But their proofs are based on corresponding angles. So I can't base the corresponding angles theorem or proof on alternate interior. So we have to say one of them is a postulate. So basically what your book does and what a lot of books do is they just say, okay, we're going to just assume angles in the same position are congruent is a postulate, meaning we can just assume it. Okay, we don't have to prove it, we can just assume it. So then once I can assume that, I can use it in all the other proofs. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's exactly what's going on. So Ryan has hit on the heart of the converse, basically. In order to do that, I need to use this corresponding angles postulate. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, you can also see that they're using three con, uh, three postulates for the triangle congruencies. So, somewhere in here is what I'm looking for. Me. Hang on a second. There's like steps. I think most of you know them. Here we go. So it's on page six seventy nine in your book. Bum, bum, bum. Writing a proof. From the conditional statement, you need to identify what is given and what you must show, okay? So if they don't say given and show, you need to say given and show. Okay, we've been doing that, no problem. Step two, draw and label a diagram to illustrate the given information, okay? 
So I need to draw and label a diagram. I told you, uh, almost always the first thing I do is draw a picture, okay? Step three, restate what is given and what you must show in terms of your diagram. Step four, plan approve, organize your reasoning. And step five, from your plan, write your proof, okay? So we'll get through those logical steps, but notice that we need the given, we need what they want me to show, and we need a picture, <laughs> okay? That's where we're headed with this. So, I think that's most of what I wanted to show you out of it. Here we go. Here's my picture. Sometimes they're nice enough to give me a picture, and sometimes they're not. So this triangle right here is ABC. This triangle is D, E, F. And what it says is, it's give, it gives me some weird stuff. Not necessarily the normal stuff that I would see. Let me go ahead and give it an angle here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just because I want to be lazy in the way I write my angles. I don't want to write angle ACB. Okay, so what it says is angle B, which is angle two. Is that okay? Angle two added to Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't say add to. <laughs> angle two and angle, they want angle ACB, which is ACB, angle three. Angle two and angle three are complementary. That's what it actually says. We're going to have to get to the added to part ourselves. And then it says angle DEF, which is DEF, angle five and angle F, which is angle six, are also complementary. Okay, that's all I get for a given. And then for my show, it says, show that segment BA is parallel to segment DE. Okay, that's what they want me to show. So I'm looking for this segment is parallel to this segment. Okay. All right. So they're doing weird stuff to me. They're doing complementary. So I need to remember what complementary means. Okay, the definition of complementary is angles that add up to be 90 degrees, right? So they're saying these two add up to 90 degrees and these two add up to 90 degrees. So from that, I would like to work my way through. We're going to do a two column proof because that's what we're working on right now. So I'm going to do a statement and a reason. We're going to work our way through. Would you like to work our way through before we get there, or would you like to go step by step? I don't care. You want to talk about the idea of the proof? No. Okay. Let's talk about the idea of the proof that they're giving. Because they're talking about 90 degrees, like 2 and 3 is 90 degrees, what I think is, look, that's a triangle. So if angle 2 plus angle 3 is 90 degrees, what does that tell me about angle 1? It has to be 90 degrees, right? Because they all have to add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to use that. Okay. It's a right angle. And then they said angle five and angle six are complementary, which means they add up to 90 degrees. And so because of that, that tells me what? Angle four is 90 degrees. It's a right angle also. Okay. So these are right triangles. So are we okay with that bit? That's like the first little foray that we're going to do. Okay. So what we're going to show is angle four is a right angle and angle one is a right angle. So what do you think whenever you take this angle and it's perpendicular, I'm sorry, this line segment, and it's perpendicular to this line. And we also know this line is perpendicular to that line. Okay, so we know that DE here is perpendicular to this line, A, C, D, F, whatever you want to call it, okay? And we know that that line 
is perpendicular to this segment BA. Mm -hmm. So basically what we know is, what we're showing is, the, this is perpendicular and this is perpendicular. So if two lines are perpendicular to the same line. Transversal. Well, it is a transversal and we could use that because we know that they're parallel now, right? That's what we're after. And, and that's actually what's going on here, right? They're trying to get me to show that BA is parallel to DE, okay? So we need the, the postulate or conjecture or whatever it is that tells me that if an angle is perpendicular, or I'm sorry, if a line segment is perpendicular to something and another line segment is also perpendicular to that same something, then they have to be parallel to each other. Do we have that? Probably something about perpendicular line segments in your word bank. Looking in or looking in your postulate lists. Ooh, I may not have an actual postulate for that. So I do have a perpendicular postulate that says through a point not on a given line, you can construct exactly one line perpendicular to that. Okay. Hmm. figure out. Oh, um, I know what it is. We can use do, do, do. there's a property somewhere that talks about consecutive angles being um, supplementary. It's probably in the word bank under parallel. No. Yeah. No. Mm, what would it be? Consecutive angles being supplementary for parallel lines. I don't know what postulate we're going to use here. Could we alter the parallelogram consecutive angle, angles conjecture? We can, mm -hmm. because that's, it's actually also true on the parallelograms. There's not a supplementary or a consecutive angles on a parallel line. I, I think I heard actually saying something about, oh, those are linear pairs. Oh, okay. So she wants to use the. That's okay. That's it is great idea. So she wants to use this theorem in here that says, if it's number six, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. So she wants to use that idea to get at what we're after. Okay. That's what I heard. <laughs> okay. And some are saying, hey, we have parallelogram that says, look, if I have one side that's cutting through a parallel, a set of parallel sides, then the interior angles, is it the alternate interior? Or is it the consecutive supplementary? Yeah. Consecutive. Consecutive sides are supplementary. So we can use the fact that we have consecutive supplementary sides because this one's 90 degrees, but that means all of those are 90 degrees, right? Okay. And we know that this one's 90 degrees, but that means all of these are 90 degrees. So the consecutive angles here would be like angle one and whatever this angle here there is that I don't have labeled, right? Um, and then consecutive interior here would be like this outside guy and this inside guy there. Okay. So we can totally use that and, and modify it. And even though we don't have a maybe postulate for it, we can, we can come up with it. So let's start. That's the idea. And then we'll have parallel lines. Okay. All right. So let's go for it. Um, where do I start? My first statement's always given. Okay. Angle two and angle three are complementary. Uh, 
I also know from the given that angle 5 and angle 6 are complementary. Okay, so I'm going to put those together and I'm just going to say that's the given. You can write given separately on each of them if you want. That's fine. Okay, what do we do next? Okay, what, what does it mean that they're complementary? Okay, they add up to 100 or to 90 degrees, right? So I need to put that step in here. I can't just assume it. We have to define it off of that complementary. So measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 90 degrees. And then the other one, measure of angle five plus the measure of angle six equals 90 degrees. How did we know that? Definition of complementary. Good. Definition of complementary. Great. I like it. Okay. And then what? So we said, well, we know if angle two and three add up to 90, then. Subtract the 90 or the remaining side 90 or 180 side. Okay, so subtract those from 180 and we'll get the remaining angle. Okay, so what we know is measure of angle one plus measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. Right, and what? We also know measure of angle four plus measure of angle five plus measure of angle six is 180 degrees, right? And how did y'all know that? The triangle. And there's something called a triangle what? Triangle sum conjecture. Triangle sum conjecture, good. So I would say at this point for the test that's in a week and a half, um, the skill that we need to be working on the most is figuring out what to put here for the reason and how to steal that out of the word bank, okay? So start using your word bank. You will have that word bank on the test. So start using your word bank and getting really familiar with what those different conjectures look like. Okay. So now we know what. Y'all said you wanted to subtract. What do you want to subtract? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Subtract angle for side B A from um, can you subtract the side from the angle? No, we're dealing with the angle. Okay, yeah, we got three. Three. Yeah, three. Oh, okay. So what we want to do is use the fact that we know angle two and three is 90 degrees, right? And we want to put that in there, and what would that be called? Instead of writing the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three, y'all want me to put in there 90 degrees, measure of angle one plus 90 degrees equals 180. That's what you're trying to get me to do, right? And I want to know how I can do that. Why is that legal? Ah, and substitution, good. So measure of angle one plus 90 degrees, 180. And I need to do it on the second one. The second one's going to just follow, right? They're the same reason. Same thing, measure of angle five plus measure of angle six, we have that it's 90. So y'all want me to substitute again. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, substitution, absolutely. And this is one of those examples where I'm not using transitive, right? I'm literally plucking this out, measure of angle two plus measure of angle three, and putting in what it's equal to. Okay, so I'm replacing it. That's not transitive, that is substitution. Good. All right. And then I heard Devante say he wanted to subtract. What do you want to subtract, sir? Or anybody. Oh, subtract the 90 degrees. Off of both of them, right? And how is it that I'm able to do that? Subtract 
Good. Subtraction property of equalities. And remember, anytime I'm doing this, like this, I've got an equation sign here, equation sign here. Anytime I've got something that looks like an equation, I can use those properties. Okay, so I can do that. Subtract up to minus 90. Don't let me cheat you guys. <laughs> I can subtract the same thought, a thing off of both sides of an equation using the subtraction property of equality. But I have to do it off both sides, so don't let me cheat. Okay. So now I've got measure of angle one, those go away, equals 90 degrees. And measure of angle four, those go away, equals 90 degrees. It's just subtraction. Arithmetic, right? We just did a little arithmetic, no big deal. You could say arithmetic there if you want to. All right, so I know these guys are both 90 degrees now. Boom. So I need to somehow convert or transform my, my argument. Devante is saying, hey, we need to talk about segments, right? They actually want me to show segment BA is parallel to segment DE, okay? So that's what I'm actually after. So our argument so far has been about angles, and he wants me to change that argument to talking about line segments. So we need to do something that talks to me about this 90 degree thing. What can that do for me sidewise here, segment wise? What is it, angle, angle, angle? That proves that the triangles are congruent and go from there. Oh no, I don't know that they're congruent. Or, no, no, no. Because we don't know that they're parallel yet. Once we get to parallel, then we can probably do some alternate interior or something like that, but they're not there yet. But what does 90 degrees mean? We know it. Okay, they're perpendicular, right? So what we really know is BA is perpendicular. I'll put the little upside down T there. That means perpendicular, right? to let's call it line A, F. I could have put the line thing up there, but I didn't. And we also know because they're perpendicular that D, E is perpendicular to line A, F. Okay, um, that's because of what? Definition of perpendicular? Yeah, I think I heard perpendicular. <laughs> that's what that 90 degrees tells me, right? It, it means it's perpendicular, and that's just the definition of perpendicular. Two segments or lines are perpendicular to each other if the intersection happens at 90 degree angles, right? Okay. All right, so we're almost there. <clears throat> now we need to convert. This guy's perpendicular to this guy. This guy's perpendicular to that guy. So therefore, these two are parallel. Anybody got it yet? It actually is. There is one that says um, what we're looking for is number six on your um, list. Interior supplemental angles on the same side of a transversal means that you have parallel lines. And so it's actually probably number seven. If you have interior supplemental angles, then your lines are parallel. So for now, I'm okay with us using that particular thing because we know it's out there. And like Summer said, we know it's there in the parallelograms. We've seen that. Um, and then what we'll do is whenever we do number seven on our thing to prove that, 
then we'll have that one proven. And so once you've proven the theorem, you can use it. So we'll, I'm okay if we want to use that for now and then say, we're going to prove that before next Tuesday, right? Okay. I'm okay with that. All right. So what we're going to say is BA is parallel to DE. Oh, hang on. I need to step in there. Uh -huh. I need a supplementary step. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, so what we need is, I need more numbers over here. Um, let's just say we're trying to say BA and DE are parallel. So let's just say this is angle one and the same side consecutive angle here would be this little square. Does everybody agree? If these are the parallel lines, then one and this guy are the same side consecutives. So I'm going to call him number seven. I just need a number on. Or you can, you know, call him by angle B, C, A. That would be fine. Okay. So what we need there is angle, measure of angle one, plus measure of angle seven equals, they're supposed to be supplementary, so that's 180 degrees. And we can call that the, oh, it's in your thing, angle sum, angle addition postulate. Which just says, I can add the measure of one to the measure of the other. Okay. We probably need something in there that tells me that angle seven is 90 degrees. I skipped steps in here. Sorry, guys. Um, how can I know that measure of angle seven is 90 degrees? Mm -hmm. Oh, vertical angles. I love that. So I can just say measure of angle seven equals measure of angle four, right? Because that's the vertical angle. That'll help me a lot to save some steps. <laughs> yeah, vertical angle postulate or conjecture or now we've proven it. We could call it vertical angle theorem because we proved that one last class period. Okay, so measure of angle seven plus measure equals measure of angle four, vertical angle postulate. All right, and now we see angle one plus angle seven is 180 degrees. Okay, because we know that they're congruent. And now we can say, okay, so we have um, because. Measure of angle one plus measure of angle seven equals 180. They are supplementary. Okay, how do I know that? The definition. People online are very quiet right now. Definition of what? Angle one plus angle seven equals 180. Four is 90, seven is 90, one is 90. 90 plus nine equals 180, we know that. Okay, so they're supplementary because, definition of what? Uh-huh, good. All right, and now we're done. Now I can go back to BA is parallel to DE and we're going to cheat and use the converse of the interior supplements theorem. So the converse says, hey, look, if you have two angles that are consecutive on the same side, of the transversal and they add up to 180 degrees, they're supplementary, 
then your two lines must be parallel. That's what the converse, that, that's what number seven says. Okay, so Ashley says, I want to use that, and then we'll prove it later. <laughs> we'll prove this guy, and once we have this guy proven on our homework set, on our project, then we'll be good. All right, that's a long one possible that there's a shorter path, but that's what we saw. So that's what we Sometimes there are shorter paths, but I didn't see a shorter one. That's what we worked out. So as long as we get there, that's all that matters. QED, we're done. What kind of a statement could I use here? So therefore, if what? Okay, so I'm going to shortcut that. If you're given the angles as complementary, see above. <laughs> I don't want to rewrite that. Then BA is parallel to DE. Yeah, that's what the therefore statement should say. If you're given those angles up above as complementary, then we know that those two segments are parallel. Ooh, that's pain. All right, I'd like to do one of your normal proofs. I think we have time to do a normal proof before we run out of time today off of the homework. Remember that we did number one in class the other day. So I'd like to do, uh-oh, what's up, Alexis? Sorry. I just wanted to know, what did that say it says? Uh, Converse of supplement of what? Of Converse of Interior Supplements Theorem. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. On this paper right here, it's number seven. Converse of the Interior Supplements Theorem. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so I would like to do, let's say either number two, number four, uh, number six, number eight. Yeah, we could do like nine or ten, but I think two, four, six, or eight. Those are kind of the normal straightforward kind of ones that we can do pretty quickly. Does anybody have a preference? Alternate interior, alternate exterior. Samantha spoke first. Number two, she says. <laughs> All right, no worries. So number two says alternate interior angle theorem. I think we all know what that one is, right? But now we get to prove it, and once we've proven it, we can forever assume it is true, right? So alternate interior angles. Okay. So what does it say? If you have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, then what? And I'm going to give you a little hint here. Whenever you're doing your ifs and thens, okay, and you're trying to make this into a given in a show, look here at number two. If you have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. It's almost always going to be that the if part is your given and the then part is your show. Okay, so given. Um, let's, let's go ahead and make our picture and then I can cheat a little bit. <laughs> and I have two parallel lines. And they're cut by transversal. That's what I'm given. Everybody agree? Let's call this line L and line M. And let's call the transversal line P. That will help us. Given. Line L is parallel to line M. 
and cut by transversal. Line P. Are we okay with that? Line L is parallel to line M and they are cut by transversal line P. Just like makes it a little easier for us to identify what we're talking about here instead of saying this line and that line and yada yada yada. Okay. I'm also going to number my angles just like I always do. Start at the top left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So they're trying to get me to prove alternate interior angles. I need a set that I can say are, are congruent, right? So three and six. Okay. So I want to show angle three is congruent to angle six. That's what I've been asked to do, right? You could just as easily say four is congruent to five. I'm trying to show three is congruent to six. Okay. Remind me, and remember that we can't use alternate exterior here, right? Because that's another proof. But the one we're probably going to want to use has to do with corresponding angles. Okay. So let's talk through that proof and then we'll stick it together real fast. What do we think? Okay, so Ashley's saying she wants to go angle three to angle two for vertical. Okay. And then she wants to go angle two to angle six for corresponding. And then we'll stick them all equal or congruent to each other. And it's not substitution, it's going to be transitivity, right? But yes, you got the right idea. Okay, and then we'll work it out from there. Hey, this one's much easier and more straightforward. Statement. Oops, and reason. I like it. What do I always start with? Given. Given. <laughs> so we need to restate that. Line L is parallel to line M and cut by. Transversal. So do we need to come up with our own pictures and stuff for the proofs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's always like my first thing that I do is just make your own pictures so you can see what that looks like in your head. And you can actually label them <coughs> angle one, two, three, and that makes it easier to work with. Okay. Summer says that was given. That's my reason. Okay. And because they're parallel, we know. <coughs> <clears throat> the corresponding angles posture that we're going to use. So Ashley said angle three is congruent to angle two and that we know that because what? Vertical angle. Vertical angle. It's actually a theorem now because we proved it, but you can call it conjecture, but we have proven that one, right? We did that on Tuesday, I think. So conjecture is fine, but we've proven it now. So it's there now because we got it. So no worries. Okay, I like it. And then you said you wanted to go angle three is congruent to angle six. What is corresponding? In this case, we're going to need to call it a postulate, angle postulate because it's the one we're using as um, we're assuming it's true. Okay. It is also a conjecture. I can prove it using alternate interior angles. So there we go. And then what? Uh, two. Oh, thank you. Angle two. No, 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 you're, you're correct. Angle two and angle six are the ones that are corresponding, right? Thank you. Keep me on my toes. Yeah, 
good. And usually I know that that's true. The difference, remember that last proof, we actually took that thing and just substituted it in. Here we're making a chain. Three is congruent to two is congruent to six. So when you make a chain, that's gonna be the transitive property. Okay, so that gives me what? Angle three is congruent to angle six, because basically the transitive property says if thing one is congruent to thing two, is congruent to thing three, then I can just drop thing two out of the middle of them and one is congruent to three, right? So that's part, that's the result of the transitive property. Okay. I guess technically you could have strung these together and called that substitution. Okay, and so now what? You need a statement. That's what I was trying to prove, right? That was my show, so I'm done. Therefore, if two parallel lines are cut by a trans uh, transversal, Alternate interior angles are congruent. Quite eloquently did. Yes, absolutely. Two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Very good. All right, so that gets you number two. Hopefully you're not waiting on me to do all of them because we won't do them all in class, all right? So um, I think that using that kind of logic we just did, you can do four and six for sure. And probably number seven, um, seven, nine, and 10 are probably fairly easy at this point. Um, I think you guys can do those. So probably we're holding out for converses, which is three, five, seven, and we're probably holding out for 11 and 12. So we'll talk a little bit more about those on Thursday, but this is due on Tuesday. So don't wait until Thursday to do all those alternate exterior and all that kind of stuff. Do what you can, stare at this, do some properties, right? Everybody knows what you're up to? All right, I'm out of time, of course. Let me see, Samantha's here. Nancy, Maria. Uh, Christina, I wanna call your name. You're welcome to go unless you have a question. Christina, I got you. Um, Alexis, I got you. Jessica, you were here. Summer is here. Matthew, Nancy Caroline, Devontae, I'll call you Devontae earlier. No, you did oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear it if you did. Oh, I think I did. I'm sorry. If I did, I'm sorry. I have another student named Devontae. <laughs> so stuck in my head. Elijah, I got you. Um, I don't see Amberly. Ashley, I got you. Mary, I got you. Ryan, I got you. Garrett, I got you. I don't see Caitlin. All right, that's it. Okay, anybody have questions there in Zoom land? Keep the screen up, please. Like 15 to 5.